Okay, so we're going to take a look at antiderivatives. So um, this is the definition. Uh, function capital F of X is an antiderivative of F of X um, on an interval if capital F prime of X is equal to F of X. So um, basically, um, you know, you've got a function and I'm just going to give you a really simple function 4x to the third and so we say that capital F of X is an antiderivative of little f of X if its derivative is equal to that so um, the function that would satisfy that would be x to the fourth because when you do the power rule on this function um, you get 4x to the third. Okay, let me fix this 3. So that's a pretty simple um, concept. Now, notice though that uh, this isn't the only antiderivative. You can say that um, we have other antiderivatives. If you guys can think of one, other antiderivatives. Derivatives. Okay. Uh, for example, x to the fourth plus uh, two is one. Can you think of another one? I sure can. x to the fourth plus seven. What about x to the fourth minus five? Because every time you get the derivative of any one of these functions, uh, the derivative of the constant part is always gonna equal zero, so it's always gonna equal to this guy right here. So what we say is the general antiderivative of four x to the third would be x to the fourth plus c, where c is uh, any constant. Okay, so C can be any, uh... okay, so let me make a little picture. Um, so this is my X and Y axis. And um, this guy right here, I'm gonna graph 4X to the third. Now this is of course a very rough sketch, but I'll just, you know, it looks something like that. 4X to the third, roughly. And then X to the fourth, plus c, what this means is this guy right here, well x to the fourth looks, you know, something like like this, sort of like a flatter parabola kind of a deal. But this isn't the only one, so this is also, you know, you can have a another antiderivative right below it. Now these are supposed to be copies of each other. Obviously I need to improve my drawing skills, but you guys get the idea. So, you know, for example, this would be x to the fourth um, minus five and so on and so forth. This one's x to the fourth, but all of these are uh, antiderivatives. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the rules. Okay, so first, um, before we go through some of the rules, um, let's go through some notation. Um, this is notation that we're going to use a lot later on. And so I'm just going to say that um, when you write down this guy, this is called the integral. If you write down the integral of f of x dx, and we're going to explain exactly where this comes from and how these are related. But for now, let's just say that this symbol right here, which is called the integral, of this function is asking you to find the antiderivative of little f, which is capital F of x plus c. Okay, so um, over here, let's let's start putting down some of the rules that we're going to be seeing. Um, first, let's do the um, the power rule. for integrals. So the power rule for integrals, 
basically says um, if you're getting the integral of x raised to a power, um, all you have to do is you're going to basically do the opposite of the um, power rule for derivatives. So you're going to add 1 to the exponent and you're going to divide by that same uh, exponent. So for example, uh, we just did one that's similar to that, but let's say you want to find the antiderivative of um, you know, x to the seventh. So what you would say is this is equal to, sorry, x to the seventh dx. You would uh, add one to the exponent, which is going to be eight, and then you're going to divide by that same number, and then plus c. So this is the antiderivative of um, x to the seventh. Now, it's uh, important to note that this does not work for um, n equals to negative one. Um, you'll notice that if you try to do it, um, what will happen is if you try to get the antiderivative of x to the negative one, you would add one, which would give you zero, and then dividing by that same number, uh, you know, this is bad, bad news. So um, there's its own rule, and so let, let's write it down right here. This is um, the antiderivative of uh, 1 over x. Okay, so um, let me write it down. Let's use the same color. No, it's slightly different. Okay, so the integral of uh, x to the negative 1 dx or the integral of 1 over x dx is simply, well, you're looking for the function that what you get the derivative of it, it equals to 1 over x. Well, we know that to be the natural log of x. Now, I want to write down natural log of the absolute value of x, and then I'll explain later where this. So plus c. Okay. So, so far so good. Uh, let me put a little line through these guys. Okay. All right, so, so far we've got those two rules. Um, then we also have the, um, the sum and multiple laws. Sum and multiple. And those are, um, you know, just the basic, um, same as the derivatives. If you have, if you're looking for the antiderivative of the sum of two functions, all you have to do is um, find the antiderivative of the first function plus the antiderivative of the second function. And then also um, if you have, if you want to find the antiderivative of a constant multiplying your function, this is equal to the constant times the antiderivative of your function. I forgot my dx right here. Okay, so for example, um, let's say I've got uh, the integral of 5x to the third minus uh, 7x squared dx. So basically what these two uh, laws are telling me is that one, this constant, I can just not pay attention to it, just leave it there, times, and then I can find the antiderivative of each one individually. So this one, for example, I'm going to use the power rule on this guy, which means I'm going to add 1, so 4 divided by 4, and then minus, again, 7 stays, x to the 2 plus 1, which is 3, all over 3, and then don't forget your plus c.